Right, watercolour white. Now, I use it quite a lot, as I'm sure you all realise that by now, because um, I've used it on some of the parts down here already. But on the horse commission I'm working on, I've got to do the front of the face now. I was going to start working, as you can see, over the top. So, the way I would normally do this is by putting a layer of kind of wash colour underneath first. So, a bit pinkier down by the nose. There's a layer of what kind of pinky, kind of grey colour underneath. I've let that dry, completely bone dry. Then I've come back in again with my little double zero brush and put in all these little fine details over the top of that wash. Wash that down a little bit just to soften it back with some clean water. I've not kind of flooded it with water but just kind of dampened it down. Let it dry again. <laughs> and I've come in with a watercolour white. So you can see this particular one here. And this is what I'm using for this commission at the moment. So barely touching the paper, that's all I'm doing. And what I'll do, I'll zoom into this for you, just one second. Right, that's a little bit closer for you. So I'm looking at the direction that all the hairs go in, and these are very small hairs on the front of a horse. But as I say, the idea of the opaque white is that, as it states, it is opaque. However, when you cover something up, it does tend to show through. So you can see with my kind of mixing palette here, is that you've got to have it, this is my kind of water reservoir down there, which is why I have my board on an angle so it all kind of, always kind of hangs down the bottom. Is so that I can pull that water into the white and make it as thick as I want it to be. And then when I've got it the way I want it, I kind of roll the brush into the white and pull away. Okay, I want it a little bit thicker than that. So roll it and then pull away. The reason why I do that, if I put it onto the black, you can see it's got a nice kind of sharp point on the top. Okay. So that's how I would kind of apply the watercolour white paint, or opaque white, whatever you want to call it, or gouache, or gouache, <laughs> however you pronounce it. Um, you could use that instead of, don't forget, so it's not a problem. Uh, one tends to cover slightly better than the other. I find the, um, the watercolour white, the SAA one anyway, which is the one I'm using at the moment, does cover quite well. I, but I don't want a complete coverage, I want it so it's... Um, not semi-transparent, but you know you can just see underneath it, just see through it. And that's the idea. Okay, so I'll give you some ideas how I use watercolour white, just by barely touching the paper, keeping it to um, probably like a um, double cream consistency. You don't want it too thin, otherwise it just fades away. But I suppose it depends on the effect that you want. So there you go, that's watercolour white, just for you guys, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. I'm going to crack on with this now. Bye-bye <laughs> for now.